I'm Cathy. I want to talk today off the cuff about time. Very important thing for everybody because we all have to live with it. <laughs> so the concept of time, the construct of time, uh, what it does, how it behaves is really quite important to us all I would imagine. Yeah. I've got the construct of time essentially as it really exists because it doesn't exist in a, a line. There isn't an arrow of time pointing from past to future in one straight narrow road. It doesn't doesn't work like that at all. Time is essentially a torus of waves. In science they're called advanced and retarded waves and that essentially means waves that come from the past to the future, which is the timeline that we seem to travel in our reality. And equally there are waves from the future to the past that are traveling to meet the present. So this toroid system has past and future constantly colliding in a present moment to produce this kind of this kind of effect, this torus. If you want to know more about the science behind this principle and the other things that it involves such as retro causality, causality, <laughs> invariant time and all that sort of stuff then it's well worth looking up this be little beauty here which is Wheeler Feynman absorber theory and that'll give you a lot more detail as to how this time mechanism of, of flow actually actually exists. Given that we've got the present moment then to work with in terms of time. I've got this cascade here that represents all the various options, the probabilities that we'd fall into, the possibilities of what's going to happen next. If you've ever seen Men in Black 2 and you remember a little character called Griffin, uh, he was a character who actually existed in this sci-fi sci zone as it were within a multiverse and he could identify which bits of the multiverse he wanted to visit and which bits were coming up next which was sometimes a bit scary so that film is great if you want more exposure to the concept of multiverse reality and time invariance <laughs> with all these options streaming down from the present moment from which we can choose or can we or can we choose <laughs> which one we're going to actually take in the road of opportunities. We've got to travel through a lot of other fields as well. Uh, it's not just the, the time field itself with these time waves colliding into the present. You've also got all the other fields of reality to contend with coming into the scenery. And let's imagine this is the, the a gravitational wave that obviously we can't detect other than gravitational waves coming in from big mega cosmic explosions like uh, LIGO have been set up to examine and, and, and theorise on. But gravity is something that we're all subject to. So there must be a gravitational wave field somewhere, a field with waves in it of some description. Then you've got the, the EM field, which we do know about, the electromagnetic field. We've, we're very familiar with the wave concepts of being very, very slow and then building up and then getting up to gamma rays right at the, at the end of the spectrum. The weak force field, that's where the neutrinos live. The um, neutrinos zipping through us at the speed of light and or thereabouts uh, by the billion trillion zillion in crammed into every square centimetre of everything that there is they're just streaming through all the time. Uh, the most abundant particle in the universe is the neutrino and it lives in the weak field predominantly. Then there's the strong field and there's, that's the area where we are bound together in our particle bits. Every, every atomic structure is, is bound together by the strong force which is holding those gluons and quarks together with the, the, the nucleus, with the, the protons and the neutrons right in the middle. So there's the strong force field that we, we exist within. So time just it zips through the slot and allows us to carry on with our sense of entropy, because it's entropy that makes us feel like time moves in an arrow format. Entropy essentially is our version of decay. When particles come together and then produce other particles, 
that, that essentially is what decay is. But we see decay as the, the, the aging, the growth and development, and then the, the dying of something. That's how we view the entropic process. If you get down to this area here, then, we've got through all these fields, various kinds, in order to, to get into our possibility wells, our probability wells, what's going to happen down here. Well, don't forget quantum tunneling. There's a quantum tunnel to be found somewhere from any situation into any other situation. And you can extrapolate a lot of these concepts into daily life if you just think about it. It it's really isn't rocket science. It's just a straightforward exchange of one analogy to another. So when you think about your own life and the way you're leading it, the amount of time you're spending doing something, don't get caught up in past future anxiety attacks because the past and the future are just waves. They're just waves that keep crashing into the present moment. It's what the present moment holds and what you do with that, how you feel about it where you put that present moment, where you put your energy, they're the things that matter. So the quantum tunnel then, the quantum tunnel system says that a, a, a particle, a quite sizable particle sometimes, can, do, can burrow its way through the, the normal constraints of reality as we see it and find themselves in another, in another space-time somewhere else. Then you've got entanglement. Uh, which is beloved, I'm sure, of, of, of all physicists and non-physicists alike as a concept that uh, Brian Cox would well love to get his teeth into, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that one's waiting in a wing somewhere. So it doesn't matter how far away they are, an entangled pair of particles will respond instantaneously to a stimulus, no matter which particle that stimulus relates to. So you don't get a, a, a ting-ting effect, you get ching, and they're both doing it at exactly the same time, no matter how far apart they are. That's entanglement, essentially, in, in a little nutshell. But it, I promise you, from personal experience, I can assure you that entanglement does happen in the human world as well. And uh, more about that another time, maybe. <laughs> your world line is unique. It's unique to you. No one else shares your world line. Your version of the present is unique to you. So that's why you, as the observer of your reality, can only see your version of reality at any given time. You can't share that version of reality with somebody else, except for those little entangled moments when you might be able to snatch it here and there. But on a general scheme of things, you've got your own singular viewpoint to work with. And that's the case at every moment that we live through. There's another thing that you might want to explore when you were thinking about this uh, particle collapse, because the whole time question also relates to wave-particle duality in some format, i.e. whether you want to look at Schrodinger's wave equation or whether you want to look at all the other kinds of different waves that exist within the forces of nature. Essentially, it comes down to the same thing. A wave is a wave at the end of the day. And so discovering or discussing whether something is or is not a wave uh, is, is arbitrary in a universe that actually exists in wave format, except when it's particle. So my belief on a personal level is that you can only have particle reality in the now, that the wave packet can only collapse into the present moment. It doesn't exist anywhere else. It can't exist in the in the retarded waves. It can't exist in the, in the advanced waves. It, 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 particle reality can only exist in the present moment. So where the maths goes with that is anybody's guess. Yes. But something that might help is this. Abraham Lorentz force. It's the recoil of accelerating charged particles and it opposes velocity so it applies brakes yes there is a force that applies brakes to accelerating charged particles in the universe and it's well worth looking up uh, I will be looking it up in more detail at a later point in time promise <laughs>
Okay, so that's it then for this little snippet on time. Thank you very much for watching and uh, do visit us at the group on Facebook. Come along and have a look at the websites if you'd like to. And if you want to buy the book Quantumology, you can find it on Amazon or you can get it from me via the website. So I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Have fun with quantum. Bye.